Aloha. Welcome. Thank you for joining my live stream. My name is Master Paul. Today is October 18, 2016, and it is a Tuesday. Today I'm coming at you from Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, today is the day I normally serve at the center, so I have a double blessing in which I get to connect with you and receive the blessings from the Tao Healing Center. Anytime we're at the center, it's always a blessing because there's so much power here at the centers. Um, every time I come here, it's like getting a bath, <laughs> like getting a spiritual bath. <clears throat> so thank you all for coming. So today we will be focusing on the power and significance of the third eye channel and its relationship to the third eye, which they are not the same. There is, of course, a correlation between them, but they are uh, unique and different. And um, I'll go into more detail a little bit later. So for those of you that are watching for the first time or just tuning into this video uh, at some point later than the live stream, then I suggest you pay attention to the entire hour. Um, I do teach uh, once a day, offer wisdom and blessings, Monday through Friday at the same time, which is 2 p.m. Hawaii time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Australia, <coughs> and uh, pretty early in India at 5.30 a.m., and it's about, uh, about 1 a.m. in the morning in the U.K. You can always, of course, watch the recordings, <coughs> but uh, when you're live, you get to interact. So I'm grateful for all those that are tuning in want to acknowledge uh, many, as many as I, the system tells me about. So Elizabeth has jumped in there, Elizabeth Folk, and Kristen Rojas, uh, Eleanor, wait, great to see Eleanor, and Kristen Strachan, Neil Levinson, great to see you, Neil. Shari's jumped in, and uh, <coughs> Bridget Givens Chaffin. Welcome, Bridget. Welcome, Patrice, and Amy's as well has jumped in there. Uh, Emma, Emma McLaughlin, thank you for joining, Emma. And then Michelle, Pat from the uh, Caribbean has jumped in there, Pat. Trinidad, I believe. I, some, I have some kind of a, uh, can't quite spit it out sometimes. But. And then Janet has jumped in. Welcome, Janet. And we see a few others uh, have come on board. And they will, of course, come in much, uh, much more as time goes by. So today, as indicated, <coughs> is uh, dedicated to teaching uh, a newer wisdom that has come to humanity. Uh, I am a worldwide representative of Dr. and Master Zhigong Sha, and I'm also considered uh, what's considered to be a divine vehicle servant and channel. Um, it took me about eight years to understand what that was in, in paying attention to this uh, spiritual teacher and spiritual father's wisdoms. And um, what, what I teach is what he's brought to humanity, which is ab about the power of soul. And every aspect of his teaching and wisdoms comes through his spiritual teachers and fathers and of course the divine. <coughs> um, he's written over 20 books, 10 of which are New York Times bestsellers, world-renowned healer. Uh, right now he's, he's doing uh, one-stroke calligraphy and he puts power into the calligraphy and the minimum that anybody is paying for any of these calligraphies is $50,000 and up. And this is just, you know, just writes a calligraphy, might take him, you know, two minutes puts power in it and um, somebody can literally sit there and receive healing from it. So very, very amazing master. And this master has brought to humanity the understandings of how to open your spiritual channels. What are the major energy centers? There's a lot of secret ones he has not revealed, but he has uh, shared with us many of the major ones and how to open them effectively and properly. And I thought I understood a little bit about the third eye until I understood more from this teacher. We're going to go into some deeper teachings again on the third eye, which I did cover last week. But the reason we're going to do that is because it's necessary to open up the spiritual channel known as the third eye channel. I'll go into the connectivity between the third eye and the channel and how one begets the other, how one cannot function very well without the other. And if the third eye channel is blocked, it um, doesn't matter how much you do to open your third eye, it won't happen. So I'll go into some of those teachings as well. But first and foremost, we're going to connect heart to heart and soul to soul. So let's place our hands in the soul light service hand position, which is very much like a prayer, but we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. This connects heaven to our heart center. Close your eyes, and I will invoke and ask all the holy beings to join us. Dear divine, dear Tao, dear source, all beings of the light side, including 
light side of all planets, stars, galaxies, and universes, to the soul of all lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, masters, ascended masters, holy beings, angels, healing angels, archangels, buddhas, bodhisattvas, and more, to the soul of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. They love you, honor you, appreciate you, respect you, and I bow down to you. I ask very humbly and sincerely that you please come at this time. Come to teach everyone that is here, borrow my mouth. Come to sit in each of our heart centers. Bless us to open our third eye and third eye channel, if that is what is divinely appropriate. We are very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes. I love you, Ani, and appreciate you. Can you please turn on? And as we chant love, peace, and harmony, we ask that you bless us to open our heart centers, open our third eye, open our spiritual channels and our third eye channel as appropriate. Thank you. So for those that know the song, please chant along. For those that do not, keep your eyes closed. Enjoy the blessing. Thank you, Divine Tao and Source. Thank you, all the holy beings who are present. And thank you to the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony. So, <clears throat> and thank you, uh, Kristen, for your request for Hawaiian. But sometimes uh, you have to go on with the show, and uh, that can be heard at a different time. <clears throat> okay, so today we're going to be focusing on the third eye channel. Now this last week, week and a half, we've been focusing on the five major energy centers. We have been focusing also on <coughs> the um, other energy centers and the channels. Yesterday we spoke about the, uh, two days ago actually, we spoke about the soul language channel and yesterday we spoke about the translation channel. How many of you enjoyed the soul language translation? Do you remember how to do it? You open your heart center first doing the message center practice. You chant the sacred mantra of San Sanjoli Bayawu, and then you ask for a message from heaven. This is a duplicatable process. If you did not open your soul language, I encourage you to go back to last Thursday when I did the actual soul language opening practice. If you do it, you can open your soul language. It is such a powerful, powerful ability to be able to reveal your own soul's language. You will find yourself walking around your house, your bedroom, and just speaking to yourself in soul language. It's very healing. You can look over your cat, your dog, speak to them, and they'll kind of cock their head at you and say, what? But if you practice more, you'll be able to translate it. Each of these spiritual channels serve a purpose, and that purpose is that we can receive messages from the soul world. We are, first and foremost, souls. We are souls before we come into this physical manifestation. That's why soul healing works. That's why soul reading works. That's why soul communication works. All things soul work if there's a step-by-step -step process to open your channel so that you know how to connect with them. And that's why we're so blessed to have such an amazing spiritual teacher and father like Dr. Master Shah 
who has come to humanity, who has very, very generously given us these very sacred methods of how to open your spiritual body, how to boost the powers of your spiritual abilities in a step-by-step -step manner. And he's brought very high-level uh, masters to the planet as well to assist you with that process. So, you know, I, I, I bow my head to this man because his dedication to serve humanity is, is very great. So the third eye channel is, of course, associated with the third eye. Now, yesterday, excuse me, Thursday, we, we released soul language. And these are released in a certain pattern. Previous week, we, we opened the first five major energy uh, centers. The lower Dan Tian, the message center, heart center. The, um, uh, we spoke about the third eye and did, did teachings, wisdom, and blessings in the third eye. The Zhu Chao, which is the intelligence center. <clears throat> and then we also um, did practices for the Kundalini point. Go back to those and see those if you did not. You go to my Facebook page, scroll through them, or you can hit the About button beneath the main picture and scroll down to videos. Um, very powerful teachings there. It will, and they're foundational teachings that lead to where we're at now. Um, and then we, we did practices on opening the soul language channel using the sacred mantra of San Sanjali Bayawu. Yesterday we focused on translation. Why are these done in this order? Why is the practices taught in this order? Um, for any of those people that are new that just came in today, you are probably excited to learn about the third eye. Everybody wants to see heaven's images. The ability to see heaven's images is not up to us. It's up to heaven. And it's not up to us to force it either. We could do every practice that you are taught by a spiritual teacher correctly, and this third eye may or may not open. It's not dependent upon our desires. In fact, very often, if we really want it, Heaven won't give it to us. And the reason why is because if we really, really want it, it's because we're not trusting, we're not, we're not aligning our soul, heart, mind, and body to heaven. We're not allowing, we're forcing. We want validation. Validation is not what heaven is, wants to give. They know they're real. Uh, your part is to move into trust. And that's why we do soul language and translation first, so you can hear clearly. The other part of that is when heaven gives you a, a message through one of the channels, this being the third one, then that message needs to be properly translated. That's the purpose of the soul language and soul language translation, uh, soul direct communication channels, is to translate the messages from heaven. An image is not a translation. An image is simply an image. It could be an individual image that heaven shows us. It could be a snapshot. It could be colored, it could be black and white. It could be a little blurry. It could be like a moving picture. It could be some people have the ability to see inside bodies, just like an x-ray machine. Everybody has different variations of third eye abilities. Mine, they're, they're mostly snapshots. So when I get third eye images, sometimes I'm not asking for them. Uh, sometimes I ask and I, and I uh, just wait and see and then I get an image. And it's I would definitely not say it's not HD, <laughs> it's not crystal clear, but because I have uh, done so much work on my other spiritual channels, on opening the soul language and translating the soul language, um, when I receive a third eye image, I also get a clear message that comes with it about the, what is meant by that image. That's why these uh, energy centers and channels are open in a certain way, in a certain pattern. And so all of you who have been watching this last week or so have been, um, you've been seeing the, the uh, you know, snippet of the teachings. You know, one hour, next day one hour. You know, I've been, we take an entire weekend just to teach, you know, one or two channels. And so to get these snippets, it's, it's really just to wet your, your taste buds and make you aware of the greater teachings that are out there through Dr. and Master Shah and uh, all of his worldwide representatives around the world. So today, as I teach on this subject, know that you're getting a snapshot, you're getting a taste of it. If you truly are interested in your spiritual journey, in your soul's journey, if that is your, your motivation, that you're just, you realize that there's more to life than just working and, and eating and dying, if, if you have awoken to that, then you, you, you would be wise to, to pay more attention to who is Dr. Master Shah and the wisdom and teachings that he's bringing to humanity. Because that is a, is a special being who gives us the A to Z 
how to get from here to there in one life. And those are very hard to find, especially um, that give you that wisdom openly. So, where is the third eye channel? We already know where the third eye is. The third eye, for those that are not quite sure, is in the very center of the brain. If you drew a line from the tips of your ears across, drew a line from your nose uh, straight back, and where those lines intersect, you go down approximately one and a half inches. And in there is a cherry-sized energy center known as the third eye. It is very close to and directly associated with the pineal gland. Now, the, um, if people's third eye have been open in previous lifetimes, then the chances of it opening this, time, this lifetime are reasonable. Sometimes it does not happen or will not happen simply because there is karma been generated. How does someone generate karma with the third eye? One of the ways that happens is because they, uh, they misuse the wisdom and information that heaven was offering them. Remember what I was just teaching you. We teach in a certain way so that by the time we get to the third eye, you have built up your wisdom and understanding so that when you do receive an image, you don't just make a, an assumption of what it means. That is the incorrect way to do things, and that creates karma. So if your spiritual channels have not been developed over the course of time, which is why I'm consistently referring back to follow a, a teacher and master that gives you the ABCs, um, and you do the empowerment exercises to boost the energy centers, then what happens is you start to open and develop your spiritual channels. You hear clearly. Then, if heaven decides to open your third eye, or if it's already open, then you can start to understand what that message is that goes with that image. That's very, very important. So the third eye channel is actually not the third eye. It has a starting point. As indicated yesterday, there are four major channels. Soul language channel, direct soul communication channel, which is the translation, the third eye channel, and then the uh, direct knowing, each of which heaven communicates with us. Right now we're teaching on the third one. And each of those channels have the same starting point. They go through the physical human body, through energy channels, and they start in the same place called the Ming Min acupuncture point. Now this point, if you put your finger in your navel and drew an imaginary line straight back, it would end up in that dip in your back. And that is the Ming Min acupuncture point. That area is also called the Tao point. It is the point in which heaven and earth connect. So this makes sense that information from heaven and earth would come in through that point. And so you and I would not know that sacred information. I say it as if it was like going to the store and ordering a hamburger. You would never learn that, ever, if it wasn't for somebody like a master shop. Unless you quit work, quit everything in your life, ran off to, to China, and then walked around the mountains by yourself until maybe, if you have a pure enough heart, a master came out of his cave and found you and taught you that. That's the kind of sacred wisdom that is being released at this time. So the Mingman acupuncture point to, uh, uh, has a pathway that makes up the third eye channel. So from this point, it goes up the spinal cord. The spinal cord is not the spinal column. It's the spinal cord. So from this Ming Min point, it goes through the spinal cord and then comes across to the fifth chakra here, the fifth soul house. And then it shoots up into the brain and to the third eye. So Ming Min up the spinal cord, across to the fifth chakra, up through the, um, the brain into the third eye. And so that's where we receive the message, but it initiates in the Ming Min Dao point. When we take the time to empower the foundational energy centers, which were taught last week and we're going to do again today, then what happens is this channel and the third eye are fed and nourished. Now, it's very important to understand that uh, there's a foundational one-sentence secret that literally has, has come out of, of, you've heard it before in various teachings, but in a simple one-sentence secret, it's, it's very hard to grasp, you know, a huge teaching in one sentence. So here's the secret that Master Shah brought to us in one sentence. Success and failure in every aspect of life is rooted in karma. The root cause of success and failure in every aspect of life is karma. So if we're unable, for example, to see through our third eye, 
then we have some third eye karma or it can open but we haven't done the necessary practices okay there's another failure made by a lot of folks that want to open their third eye too soon too fast and that is that they put emphasis on this area that can be a big mistake if you check in with anybody that has third eye open they not not all the time but certainly you're going to run across maybe 40 50 percent of them uh, they have headaches a lot and they have very low energy one of the reasons why is because like all the spiritual channels we have to have uh, heavenly power to boost to our foundational energy centers so that these instruments in which heaven communicates have the ability to work well the kundalini area uh, snow mountain area in dr master shah's teaching um, the golden urn and other teachings it's all the same area i'll give you more definition in a minute this area if it is not boosted consistently on a daily basis the opportunity to open and continue to keep open your third eye and receive messages is greatly diminished if you're blessed to have your third eye open then you want to definitely learn this practice and do it often it is one of the most important practices that you can do to assist you with all your energy in your life stamina vitality immunity uh, it is exceedingly important to your overall health and well-being of your kidneys your brain and of course your third eye it's called a kundalini or snow mountain area practice so we're going to do that now and we're going to do this practice for about 10 minutes or so and uh, maybe a little bit longer because i'm going to walk you through how to use it to assist in opening this third eye channel okay so test where does the third eye channel begin the ming min acupuncture point where is the ming min acupuncture point that's right straight across from belly button that little dip in the back that's where it begins where does it go to after that up the spine that's right where does it go to after that to the throat and then through the brain into the third eye so that is your third eye channel i cannot put enough emphasis on the necessity to not rush into trying to open your third eye even if you were able to see images sometimes the images that were shown not so pleasant it really depends on what was our previous lives like if if you leaned a little bit towards the non-light side you might be shown some dark and unpleasant images that certainly is possible doesn't mean you're not a beautiful person today we've all made mistakes all of us if we didn't we wouldn't be here okay so know that in opening your spiritual channels the purpose is to serve the purpose of life is to serve the purpose of service is to make others happier and healthier so know that any of these practices has that root uh, intention and purpose behind it this is a spiritual journey we are souls having a physical experience not the other way around so as we move into any of these practices keep that in the forefront of your heart and your mind all right so let's sit up straight wherever you're at <clears throat> place your feet flat on the floor now there are four powers that we're going to incorporate to bring about empowerment to the kundalini area which in turn will feed and nourish and clear blockages in our uh, third eye channel and the third eye um, what we're going to do is we're going to place our hands in the body power position we'll do that in a moment but i'm going to tell you what it is now one hand over your lower abdomen resting your knuckle in your belly button and then gently drop your hand cupped just gently cup don't push leave a little space in there for energy to flow through the other palm try to put the center of your palm in that ming min point that dip in your back now some people their body um, condition does not allow for their arm to go behind their back in a comfortable way in that if that's the case place both palms one over the other again relaxed try to keep your shoulders relaxed in this body power position so we'll come back to that posturing in a minute the sound power i'm going to walk you through a variety of different sound mantras there they have a um, empowerment frequency that gathers light to the area I might say divine light, I might say divine love, I might use uh, uh, a mantra as Jo 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 or boost power. Whatever I do, just repeat after me. Sound power. 
light power, excuse me, mind power, we're going to visualize golden light in the area of the Kundalini. Where is the Kundalini, Kundalini area? Okay, touch your belly button, draw an invisible line straight to the back, go back two-thirds of the way, drop down about two and a half inches. You have a fist-sized energy center right there, that's your Kundalini area, okay? These are very close approximates. So again, uh, visualization, golden light in that area I just described. Soul power. This is the power that Dr. and Master Shah has brought to humanity. When we connect to the soul world, whatever it is we're working on becomes dramatically more enhanced. So we always invite in all the holy beings and we always connect to the soul of whatever uh, area we're empowering. All right. So in order to do that, let's place our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position again, much like a prayer, dropping the left hand in front of the heart center. That's opposite on the video. So drop your left hand in front of your heart center. Close your eyes. Repeat after me. Dear divine, dear the source creator, I love you. I truly appreciate you. Could you please come to sit in my kundalini area? Dear all beings of light, masters, ascend, ascended masters, lamas, sikhus, and gurus, saints, kahunas, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, I love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you. Could you please, as appropriate, come to sit in my kundalini area? Bless me to clear blockages in this area, to open and clear blockages in my third eye channel and to open my third eye as appropriate. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. Dear the soul of my Kundalini area, my third eye and third eye channel, I love you. You have the ability to clear your blockages. Do a good job. Thank you. Now, the difference is I was extremely respectful to all the holy beings outside, but anything that's inside my body are souls underneath the order of my body soul. I give them an order, do a good job, okay? You don't say do a good job to Jesus and Buddha and Mother Mary. You say, I'm extremely grateful, I'm honored, okay? Inside souls, outside souls. Keep your eyes closed. Let's bring our, um, our hands back down to our lower abdomen, bring our hands uh, one, pa one palm over the lower abdomen, one palm over the Mingman acupuncture point. Close your eyes. Visualize the golden light in the Mingman acupuncture point area and the snow mountain kundalini area. Let us begin. Jo, 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 jo. Jo 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 See the light gathering Jo 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 Light 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 See light coming in from three hundred and sixty degrees. Light 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 Light, 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 Jo, 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 Light, 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 light. Visualize golden light ball in your lower abdomen, we're going to ask a special golden healing ball in heaven to come to assist us. So repeat after me, <clears throat> dear Shah's golden healing ball, I love you and appreciate you. Can you please come from heaven to sit in my kundalini area? And as I direct you, could you please bless me to clear blockages in this area? in my third eye and third eye channel. I am very, very grateful. Thank you. 
and see this golden light ball. It's already come from heaven. It's already sitting in your Kundalini area. It's an exceedingly powerful golden light ball, and it's spinning. Watch the direction that it is spinning. Jo, 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 light, 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 we're going to start moving Shah's Golden Healing Ball up the spinal cord. Start moving it up nice and slow. Jo, 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 Jo. Shah's Golden Healing Ball. Shah's Golden Healing Ball. See the light ball moving up the spinal cord. And as it's spinning, it's clearing blockages in your third eye channel. Shah's Golden Healing Ball. 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 Silently chant Shah's golden healing ball. Seeing as this golden healing ball is spinning quite rapidly, very brightly, and it's just going up your spine, up your spine. Clearing blockages in each vertebrae, in each of the nerve centers. Clearing blockages in your spinal cord. Clearing blockages in the third eye channel. Once you get to the top of your spine, go right back down to the Kundalini area. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball, 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 Shah's golden healing ball. Bring the ball back down to your Kundalini point. See it in your Kundalini. We're going to grow the size of this ball. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. See Shah's golden healing ball getting bigger. It's clearing blockages, boosting power to your foundational kundalini area. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Now we're going to move it back up the spine, moving it back up the spine, all the way to the top of your spine. Move it up your spine, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball. Now move over to the center of your neck. Clearing the blockages in your fifth soul house, fifth chakra. See the golden light ball. Clearing the blockages inside the fifth soul house. Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's go hold it there, don't move. Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Move the ball up now into the brain. See the ball clearing all kinds of blockages in the brain. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball, 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 Shah's golden healing ball. And so now focus on the third eye. See the ball in the center of your third eye, shining light down through the channel. 
down through the brain, down through the neck area, the fifth soul house, across to the spinal cord, down to the Kundalini. See the light radiating all the way through the channel. Shah's golden healing ball, 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 Shah's golden healing ball. Start moving back down through your brain to your fifth soul house. Shah's golden healing ball, 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 Shah's golden healing ball. Over to your spine, start going down your spine. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball down to your kundalini. Shah's golden healing ball. 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 Now see it rotating in your kundalini points. <coughs> Keep your focus on your kundalini points. I want you to imagine that this golden light ball starts shooting these flares up the spine, up to the third eye, and then it comes back. The golden light ball remains in your kundalini, and it shoots up a flare, up your spine to the fifth soul house, up to your brain and third eye, and then it comes back. And then back. And then back. And then back. Up your spine, fifth soul house, up to the brain, third eye, back down the spine. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Keep your focus on the third eye. Excuse me, keep your focus on your kundalini. See the big golden ball in your kundalini, but it shoots these flares up the channel. Back. Up the channel and back. Up the channel and back. Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Shah's golden healing ball, 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 Shah's golden healing ball. Now calm down. Keep your visualization in your kundalini. See, there's a pure golden channel running up your spine. It is golden light through the entire channel over to the fifth soul house, up into the brain and third eye. There is nothing but pure golden light through this entire channel. Visualize the golden light coming into your kundalini area Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We always thank all the holy beings for their service. Thank you, divine. Thank you, creator. Thank you to all the holy beings who came to offer their service at this time to bless me to clear blockages. Thank you to Shah's golden healing ball. And we say, please respectfully return in Mandarin Chinese. We say, gong song, gong song, gong song. So it's very important to offer your deepest gratitude and respect to all the soul world for their service to us because they're always serving us even if we're not aware of them. Very relevant and important for, uh, for our own spiritual growth. Because if we take advantage and don't offer gratitude, do you think they're going to come back next time? Probably not. But if we open our heart, show our gratitude, they're happy to return. Because how does, a ho how does a holy being, how does a saint, how does a Buddha become a holy being, a saint, a Buddha? They become that level. They receive that soul standing because they serve and they serve and they serve. When you're in the heavenly realms, how do you maintain that standing? Because you can drop. They maintain it because when, when, when humans like us ask for their service, some do, some don't. But the ones that come offer us their virtue. They worked very hard for that virtue, but they're giving it to us to serve our soul journey. Why? 
because that's the nature of how the universe works. It's selflessness. And in doing so, selflessly, then heaven rewards them by putting more virtue back in their Akashic records. So they maintain or increase their soul standing. It is the nature of the cycle of how the universe works. And that's why holy beings come to service when we call them. But if we don't offer gratitude, then it's just they, they would rather go serve somebody that is more interested in, in, uh, in truly understanding the, the, the laws of, of, of the universe. <clears throat> and so this was a practice that was uh, very, very important for the spiritual channel of the third eye. Please share. What did you experience? Did you notice any opening of the uh, crown chakra? Did you feel any vibration in the uh, Zhu Chao, which is the intelligence center? Sometimes this vibrates when we're working on the channel. Did you feel any heat up and down the spinal cord or spinal column? Uh, some people feel breathing in their Mingmen acupuncture point. Okay? Um, what did you notice in this? Did any of you have a third eye image or did you have any flashes of color or light as you were doing this practice? So these are practices that you, uh, <laughs> you're pretty fortunate if you do it once and you have a, have a result. You have to do these practices on a consistent basis because the, the Kundalini area, the snow mountain area, is what's called a prenatal uh, energy center. That means it carries the energy of our ancestors in it. And it's, it's important that we keep feeding that because sometimes our ancestors, their karma is very good and it benefits us. Sometimes not so good, so it's important for us to keep clearing the blockages of this area. Because it is very relevant to the, the empowerment of our physical body, our kidneys, our brain, uh, and of course the, the spiritual body of our third eye. Um, so Tawana says, felt very hot, sweaty, headache, and very thirsty. Uh, Eleanor says she felt chills in the spine area and in the throat area. Excellent, excellent movement. Now notice where we ended in the practice. We ended at the Kundalini area. It's very important to always ground. I've given visuals before about how the human vessel needs to be uh, built like a pyramid in that we have a very strong base, a foundation, like the three-legged kettle, you know, the old witch kettles where they have the three strong power legs, like that. You want to have a very strong foundation. And so if you do any practices that has an association with visualization or imagining up here, always bring that excess energy back down, ground it, okay? Um, if not, then you might find yourself a little dizzy, a little wheezy, a little out of order, a little nausea. These are because the energy stayed up here. Have, too much of, of humanity is, is up here way, 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 way too much. So even though it's new, these things called foundational energy practices, it truly should be taught in schools throughout humanity because it would serve a human being's energy vessel and the entirety of their, of their physical, emotional, and mental bodies for life. It would serve them so well. I'm sure within 100 years from now that will be the case. But we're still waking up humanity to these basic teachings. Um, so Janet says, my whole body is vibrating. I saw a searchlight coming from the center of her brain and a white-blue light ray. Awesome. Great sharing, Janet. Congratulations on that uh, visualization. Excuse me, on that uh, image that they showed you. And then uh, Linda says, flashes of light, hot and vibrating. Uh, Deborah says, I saw an image of a man's face. <clears throat> and lightning in the brain coming from the third eye, hot at the kundalini area. Excellent awarenesses. So you may, uh, first of all, the first thing we always say is thank you. Bow our head nine times to heaven. Thank you, heaven. Thank you to the soul world. Thank you for the opportunity to receive these images. What if you did not receive anything? What do you say? Thank you. Thank you, heaven. Thank you for the opportunity to continue to open my spiritual channels. I know when I'm ready, you will fully open them for me. Gratitude, right? So these are very important steps. Now, when and if heaven shows you an image, we must learn to receive the message. What is meant by this image? Dear heaven, I am so grateful for receiving this image. Can you please give me a message to go with it? And then you wait. Don't let your mind figure out what it is. If you don't receive a message, that's okay. Just don't go out and assume you know what it means. Just be with it. Work more on opening your other spiritual channels of soul language and, and, and the soul uh, direct communication channels so that you can become more proficient 
at translating the messages. So it's that's now sometimes heaven is very generous and they give us some uh, preemptive warnings. We see things to protect us or they might show us an image of where we had lost something. So these are on the more obvious side um, but in terms of things that have no relationship to um, to a pre-warning or to finding something better to make sure the message is clear and that requires opening of the spiritual channels a bit more. And so um, Deborah says, saw an image of a man's face. I think I repeated that. Any idea who the man's face was, Deborah? It could be, uh, it could be one of your guides. Um, again, this is where you can ask a message. Dear Heaven, can you please share with me uh, what was the purpose of seeing this man's face? Um, you can also <coughs> receive uh, what's called a divine pendulum at some point in time if you become a divine healing hands healer and you could ask was this man's face one of my heaven's teams you can get a yes or a no so forth uh, marina says lightning in the brain coming from third eye and crystal during the practice she felt some pulsating sensations in her head okay deborah says was not so clear i understand i understand that sometimes the third eye images are not so clear that's another thing that we can do dear heaven thank you for this image can you please make it a bit more clear for me? Now, uh, Master Francisco Cantero, uh, who has, was born with a very wide open third eye and has kept it open his whole life, um, is one of Dr. Master Shah's most advanced teachers. And when he was sharing with us his experience with third eye and what he's done to make it work better for him, he says that he puts his mind, his focus, in his Mingman acupuncture point, closes his eyes, and his mind goes down to the kundalini area, the Mingman acupuncture area. That's where his mind is, and that's where he's seeing uh, images. And so I would encourage you to also do that as you practice. You know, people think focus here, but where's the empowerment? Where's the message come in at through the third eye channel, which is the Mingman acupuncture point? And so this is probably one of the clearest third eyes that I've ever come across giving us that wisdom up to you if you want to follow it might might be some value for you okay now um, yesterday or actually today a student took advantage of uh, one of the blessings I was offering last week which was for a healing and transmission system to clear the blockages as appropriate in each of these five major energy centers that is still available um, so for the third eye and the Kundalini that's a package and the uh, the message center and the lower dantian and the intelligence center that's a package as i was as i was preparing for today um, and i was looking at okay this is the third eye channel people always want to do something for their third eye what can i do to put together a package that can assist them for their third eye and so what i wanted to suggest as an offer is the package of the uh, third eye energy center itself and a um, crown chakra blessing for the channel for the third eye channel so one is the um, third eye center itself which is a soul mind body healing and transmission system what that does is it's basically a brand new third eye it's from heaven it's karma free comes in the energy and matter of the old one has to go a light wall protection is then uh, transmitted so any karma associated with that that's inhibiting you from opening it uh, can no longer stop you from doing that uh, and then the channel and, and then uh, one more divine order is given of course there's soul healing uh, given to the area to make sure the blockages are cleared and the channel itself there's no transmission to do all that with the channel but what I can offer is what's called a crown chakra blessing which is uh, the, probably not the best verbiage, but it's very much like a, like a hurricane of lights, like a rotor rooter of light that just goes through the channel and just zzz, 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 pretty much clears blockages in a very, very, very powerful way. Um, it does not come with light wall protection as the first one does, uh, but for the channel, it's not overly necessary unless, um, unless there's a lot of blockages in there. Uh, that combination could have a significant, significant value for you, okay? Um, so normally, 
the honor fee for both of those would be 250. Um, if someone wants to do both of those, then I will do them both for the honor fee of 200. Okay, um, so it's up to you if that's of interest to you. Uh, certainly, if it's not, no worries. I'm not going anywhere. But um, it's some, it's an opportunity to open a, a very important spiritual channel that, if heaven deems appropriate, and you do some practices, could allow you to see heaven. And some of your heaven's team guides, angels and saints, maybe Buddha, uh, maybe Jesus. It's up to heaven. But I want to make sure that that is available to you and that you're aware of it. The crown chakra blessings are, of course, available for all four of the spiritual channels, the soul language channel, the soul communication channel for translation, of course, the third eye channel, and the um, uh, direct knowing channel. So to be able to receive a crown chakra blessing for all four of them, um, if you have the financial ability, very, very wise. And they are 100 per channel. You can do one or all of them. And unfortunately, I cannot do a package on all of them because we're restricted by the Institute on what the honor fees are. Okay, but I want this to um, I want this to serve you, and I want to uh, to make that available to you. And I also want to answer Tawana's question. She says, "Is it normal to feel extremely drained?" Uh, no, that's not normal, Tawana. Let me check guidance, see what's going on. Yeah, so what's happening for you, Tawana, is you, you receive so much frequency that your body is processing it. This does happen, uh, even with the masters, we'll go into, I'll drink two cups of coffee outside of the retreat room, I'll walk into the retreat room, sit in the front row, Master Shaw is teaching, and I'll knock out. Because the frequency is so high, it just makes me feel exhausted. Um, it's really just an aspect of your body um, assimilating the frequencies that were just used with this practice. Shaw's Golden Healing Ball is very, very powerful as well. So uh, do know that that is a positive side effect of working with these higher frequencies, not a negative one. And it's very much like if somebody, uh, uh, not the same, but in a similar genre, if somebody decides, okay, I'm going to clean up my diet, and they start adding all these vitamins, all these wonderful things, they start juicing, da 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 and then they get really sick. Why? It's called a healing crisis. They're building up their body with such purity, their body pukes, basically, and gets rid of all the old. And so when we bring higher frequencies into our body, healing frequencies, sometimes our body reacts like what you're experiencing it. So this, again, is a good thing as long as you have the awareness of it. Without that awareness, uh, misperceptions can occur. Okay? Um, so I'm running up on the last couple of minutes. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve you here. Tomorrow we're going to be focusing on the direct knowing channel. It'll be the, uh, the final teaching in this series on opening the spiritual channels. And it'll be an opportunity as well to learn about the direct knowing channel. I won't go into any teachings at this point, but I can tell you that Master Shah tells all of us that it is the most important channel. And the reason why it's the most important is because the other channels are left to um, interpretation. They're left to the ability of our purification to receive a message and receive it clearly. Whereas the direct knowing channel, we just know. We get a very clear message. So we're going to uh, go over that tomorrow. Um, there's not a huge amount of teachings on it, so I'm going to bone up on those teachings and then do some flows on it as well. We'll do some practices to open that channel and that will assist us all in a very powerful way. So I'm very grateful for you coming. If there's any interest in the Divine Services, you can go to my website, asoulhealer.com. Um, I just have had a, a webmaster working on it. I'm pretty happy with the results, so maybe you'll like it too. You can also uh, email me at asoulhealer at yahoo.com or Facebook messaging. So I truly appreciate you coming. Make sure you hit the share button. If you're new, uh, I believe when I stop right in the upper right-hand corner, there's a follow or, or a sign up or something like that, which tells you when I actually go live. Um, and so you can click on that if you'd like. So thank you all so much for coming, and thank you for sharing. Bye-bye.